Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at some Norwegian kit which I have in my collection. The main reason for having this, however, is the fact that it was actually used by, the, the items we're going to look at were used by British forces, primarily Royal Marines, and we're going to talk about the details of that going forward. And what we have on the mannequin here is a little set of uniform. We have the field cap, the M71 field shirt, better known to all other militaries as a Norgy, and then the V-neck jumper worn over the top of that, which is really warm. It's a fantastic design of jumper, as we'll get onto when we look at this in more detail in just a moment. The first thing we're going to talk about is the field cap. Now, this is probably the most limited, uh, this saw most limited British use. The, one of the most famous examples of this, though, is uh, Major General Jeremy Moore down in the Falklands. He wore one of these with his Major General's rank. It's quite an iconic look and certainly set him apart down in the Falklands. There is limited evidence of these being used more generally by Royal Marines and Arctic Warfare training. But I did include that here by way of completeness just to talk about that's the, the field cap. And as I say, quite an iconic bit of kit because of uh, Jeremy Moore's use of one of these down in the Falklands. There is a stamp in the cap and you can see that here. You have the size, which is 59 and I think 91 may be the date. And you can also see the fold out section, which is designed to protect the neck and the ears from cold here with a lining material inside. The V-neck jumper might not immediately it might not be immediately be apparent that these were used. By far the more famous item is the Norgy shirt, of course. We have a nice photograph here of Royal Marines during Arctic warfare training, and you can see several of them are wearing this jersey pullover, whatever you want to call it. This also shows various other details, including use of the M71 shirt as well. The pullover itself is an excellent design. It's very, very warm. It does have obviously a half half opening down the front, or not quite half, but it has this opening down the front to put it on over the head with a piece of Velcro there. I suppose you could un-Velcro that and allow a little bit more ventilation if you did get too warm, but by Velcroing that in around the neck there, it really does keep the, the air in, keeps a good layer of uh, warm air in against the body. And then we have an interesting feature here. We do have turn back cuffs, but these can be turned down and they actually have, if I just put my hand in here, they do have a thumb hole, so they can be used as a hand warmer uh, and you can you have your hand in there and they, they come down to the knuckles, which is rather nice if they are unrolled. So a good feature of the design. It has a built in sort of wristlet to it, if you will. Neat feature of the design. Otherwise, very simple. There is a label in this, as I remember. So we'll have a look at that now in more detail. Unfortunately, the labeling in this is not particularly informative or interesting. We do have a size label M for medium. And then we have washing instructions. And you can see this is a wool mix. 75% wool, 25% polymid, and then you have hand wash in both Norwegian and English, and then you have made in Norway. And now we move on to look at the most iconic bit of Norwegian kit, which has influenced production for many other militaries, not just uh, British, but also France made these as well. I think other countries did too. Is the Norgy shirt or Norge shirt, and that's the colloquial names for it. It's the M71 field shirt in Norwegian service. And it's a very innovative design for the 1970s. And the reason it was copied is it's a very good design. Now, fellow YouTuber Tamachi has made a video looking at this in some detail, and I will link through, I'll put a card to that in the corner of the video here, but I'll summarize the details of this here just for uh, completeness sake. Obviously, we do have a zip right the way down the front there. You can see it unzips and can be worn open like that. When this zips up, the collar rolls down which means that it, it hugs the neck nicely and keeps the air in around the neck. The cuffs are, use a, well, they use a single button here, as you can see. And if I unbutton this and roll it back a little bit, inside it has a very fine, almost like a terry cloth finish, like a, a, a terry towel, uh, which means that it does trap a lot of air underneath. So it's an innovative design for the 70s, very comfortable, very popular when you think that British Army and the Royal Marines at this time, the standard issue shirt for wear under combat uniform was a wool polyester mix, very scratchy, not very comfortable, and this is arguably warmer as well. So very popular. These do turn up all over the place. Uh, we we're talking to uh, David Sayer, and he had one of these in the Gulf, which he took with him. Ideal in the desert, very cold at night. It can be very cold at night, so having a, a good warm insulating layer like this is ideal. And of course, worn in the fog ones as well. And we have an example here, a photograph of two Royal Navy commandos wearing these 
and you can see uh, they appear at the neck you have the distinctive turned down collar of the m71 field shirt and then of course these would be manufactured by the uk for issue more generally later on into the 1990s so a very popular design so popular in fact that they were actually introduced as a standard bit of kit uh, as, a, as a, a production item for British forces, not just private purchase. So an interesting bit of kit, and quite uh, quite a good design and obviously quite long lived, being introduced in the 1970s and then being used right the way through. I think some people still use them today. Uh, they're quite a, a popular item. You can see the label here and again we have the shield shape which forms a stamp in the lining of the cap. And you can see an L there for size large. And then we have what I believe to be the date of 1972. I believe that's the date of manufacture on the other side. And this also provides a good close-up of the terry cloth interior of this material, which obviously provides an excellent insulative layer. The final thing to look at here is this pair of Norwegian snow gaiters. And these were used by Royal Marines, not only in Arctic warfare training, but also they do turn up in the Falklands as well. Worn with a variety of different types of boots, but you commonly see them worn with Cairn Gorm boots, which is something else I've covered. That's a pair of walking boots which were available at the time, which I've covered elsewhere on the channel. And you can see a photograph of that here, a combination of Cairn Gorm boots with the Norwegian snow gaiters. So they're made of canvas and they're reinforced in, in several different points. You can see we have the stitching down the sides here and stitching with the reinforcement where these sit over the top of the boot at the front there. They're not particularly tall. They come sort of just, just up the calf. They're not... Uh, to just below the knee, they're, they're a relatively short gaiter. Around the back here, we have webbing reinforcement around the heel. We look inside here, you can see the reinforcement at the front there, made of a heavier grade of canvas. And then at the rear, there's a strip that runs up the back seam as well, as you can see there. And obviously there's a, an edge, and it's a reinforcing piece all around the edge here, a piece of uh, webbing used to reinforce there. So anywhere there's going to be excessive wear and tear, basically. At the top we have a draw cord as you can see and that obviously allows you to tighten this in around the calf. The leather strap is then used to fasten around the, the instep of the boot so it goes underneath the boot like that and fastens over the top over the front of the gaiter using the strap there. And uh, they don't seem to have been particularly popular in Norwegian use. Uh, talking to Tamachi he was saying that uh, they weren't particularly popular uh, in Norwegian use, but they do seem to have been, the Royal Marines who got their hands on them do seem to have used them, certainly some selected to. So there we are, Norwegian Snow Gator. Quite a simple design, uh, really, um, in the grand scheme of things. It would inspire latest, later British production uh, of, of similar, slightly taller gators. Um, but there we go, that's Norwegian Snow Gators. And as I say, used by Royal Marines, both in Arctic warfare training, and uh, some of them took them with them down to the Falklands. So another bit of Norwegian kit in use by British forces. So there we are, I do hope you found it interesting. Just a brief overview, of, not a hugely in-depth video, but just to show you some of these items I've picked up and are in the collection. Thank you very much to Tamachi as well for his assistance in getting some of these bits and pieces together, notably the shirt, and obviously providing me with the cap as well. Very much appreciated, thank you for that. The idea of this is just a brief overview. These items might be covered in more detail going forward. If you'd like to see that and you'd like to see other videos on the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell with the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel, if you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.